All right, today I'm going over scanning dark objects with the EinScan Pro HD. Now, dark is kind of a thing with structured light 3D scanners as opposed to lasers like the HX model in that the black color doesn't reflect light back to the sensor, which is picking up all that data. So you have to do a few extra steps to make it work. Uh, in this case, we're actually going to use the AE Sub Spray, which is basically spray paint that just dissipates into the air after about you know one to four hours and leaves absolutely no residue. Very, very good stuff. It's available in our store now if you need it. Now, so in the last episode, we scanned both of these objects. This one worked great. This one did not come at all. Uh, so be sure to go check out that video for the basics today. We're just gonna do this pipe cutting jig. So we're gonna go into the software. By the way, we're running an i7 770HQ at 2.8 with eight gigs of RAM. You should have 16, just works better. But as you'll see, we're not gonna have any lag here. And a GTX 1050Ti, which is not as necessary as a fast CPU, which does all the processing of the data. And then the RAM just allows you to scan more data. So we're in here. I'm going to do another fixed scan on the turntable that automates the whole process. It's just going to take six different angles. I can do anywhere from four to 180 different angles. So if this was more complex or there's more little areas I needed to see through, I can do a lot more angles. But for this, it's basic enough. We can get away with six. I'm going to go to new project group. I'm going to call this pipe cut jig. And we're gonna do a non-texture scan. Texture scan is when you have the color pack and you can scan in full color. Today, we're just doing geometry. Global markers, we'll talk about later. So make sure you're subscribed when we go over that. Very, very cool feature. All right, so we've got our project group there. We've got the turntable. We're not gonna do HDR, six steps. The turntable coded targets. Okay, so right there, as you can see in the camera preview, you can't see anything. So we're gonna to have to spray it with this stuff and just coat it so that it has some reflections to go off. Now, one of the easy ways to do this is grab a piece of wire like this, and I'm just gonna take this part and I'm just gonna hang it off this wire real quick. I'm gonna go double wire right there. And then I'm just gonna do the top on this run before doing the bottom and getting the full thing. Make sure to get all the little crevices. Right. Every side, get the edges. We want to get all that scan data on the first run. Make sure it's nice and coated. Okay, so now we're good to go. So I'm just gonna lay this flat. All right, boom, all right. So now you can see it bright and clear in the preview window. We should be good with the turntable coded targets, but because this object is bigger, it's covering more of them up. So it might not work on the first run and I'll grab the solution to that when it doesn't work. Okay, so as you can see, this object is a little bit too big for the coded target. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the included calibration card that comes with the Einscan Pro HD here, and it comes in this nice black velvet carrying case, which also comes in really, really handy when you want to cover up the coded targets. So I'm just gonna fold this in half, and that makes a great little platform that just covers up like that, just covers up the targets. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the feature alignment mode instead of the turntable coded targets and it's gonna actually use the features of the part to align everything. So I'm just gonna hit go. It's gonna do a little verification process where it goes around a couple times, make sure that it can you know, detect enough of the features to tell that it's different. And then it's going to go around and do all six angles and verified. So we got one angle there. 
We'll get rid of this data super easy as soon as it's done scanning without having to go into CAD or anything like that. She's coming together. Now, as you can see, when I zoom in, you see all the actual points. You're, you're really generating millions of points and a big mesh of data that then gets meshed into a 3D object, an STL, OBJ, or something for your CAD program. Uh, and this data is exportable and modifiable in Fusion 360, SolidWorks, and some other CAD programs. Or if you get the reverse engineering design bundle, it comes with Geomagic Essentials, which is specifically designed for cleaning up scans, and it works really well. We'll have a future video on that, so make sure you're subscribed when that comes out. Okay, so the point at which I picked it up with my fingers right there, rubbed off the spray a little bit right there, and so we're going to have to get those angles again, but that's okay because I'm actually going to turn it on its side and we're going to get those angles from another orientation. So from this screen, I'm going to hold shift, circle the bit that I do want, then just hit revert and delete the extra data. Bada bing, bada boom. Now I apply the edit and let's turn this thing on its side. Okay, so I'm just gonna, without rubbing off too much more of it, I'm just gonna put it like that. Now I'm gonna hold it back up again because I gotta spray the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna spray the bottom and these two areas where I hit it or where my fingers took off the spray, and then the whole bottom. Okay, so now we've got a coated part. I'm just gonna set it right down here like that. Looks like I should have enough inside the holes. Actually, I'm gonna do a little bit more inside that hole right there, just to make sure we get full scan data. All right. Now I'm going to set this down. This part was also printed on the uh, Ascentium HSE. Probably HTNCF is probably printed around 400 millimeters per second. Uh, if that sounds crazy to you, that's because it is. They're using all kinds of industrial machinery and linear motors in their machines. Anyway, check out our videos on that really cool machine. So now I've got this. All I'm going to do, go back, got my project groups, scan setting, everything looks good. Hit go one more time. Now, if you were doing like 120 angles, or if you were working on a much slower computer, then this would be a great time to go grab a coffee, a lunch, something like that. Okay, our verify failed, but that's okay. I'm just going to raise this up a little bit since I used it in a different scan. And then I'm just gonna point this crosshair down a little bit, get it more centered, and we're gonna hit go again. So it should verify it just fine this time. Oh, the verify failed again. So that tells me it needs a different angle to start on to verify. So I'm just gonna turn it around like that. And I'm gonna hit go. It's that big flat surface. Oh, you know what? I need to get a little closer, but we'll see if this works. So what I'm looking at now is my scan isn't capturing the very top of the part and it's capturing a little more of the turntable than I need. So I could actually it's a little closer, maybe a little higher, angle it slightly differently, get more of the part, but it should still work pretty well. All right, that one worked good. As you can see, so that's the part I was talking about where it was cut off, but it should be getting it on these ones now because that's fully within that area. And we don't need anything really aside from the bottom because we already got all that on the previous scan. So we're getting all this. That's awesome. I messed up and didn't get the part that I needed. So I'm just gonna trash this data. I'm gonna move my scanner a little bit and then that is fully in view. All right, we should be good with that. I'm gonna angle it up slightly. Okay, now let's do it one more time. All right, there we go. That's the data I want. Right up there. Should get it on this next one. Okay, so I still didn't get the data that I wanted. So I'm gonna do a different angle. But before I do, I'm gonna select the scan data that I do want because it never hurts to have extra unless you have not enough RAM. 
Uh, I'm going to revert and delete selected data. And then I'm just going to do a third orientation. Uh, I'm going to touch it where we've already gotten all the data we need. And instead of the other angle, I think this angle should work much better. Now, it does need to be stable as it's going to be moving around. I'm going to get right in there. I'm actually going to... Let's see, how do I prop this thing up? Eh, no, it's not stable. You know what? Let's, let's actually look. Let's go in and look at, I'm gonna commit this. I'm gonna see where I'm missing data because I might be doing extra work right now that I don't need to be doing. So always just check and find out. Okay, here we go. So literally I got that corner and all I'm missing now is that little corner right there which is on the long edge. So if I do this, boom, right there, should be able to get that data. So they don't need to do all those other scans. And realistically, this is good enough. So instead of making this video go on for another five minutes, I'm just gonna go right out and I'm gonna show you how, oh wait, no. We need more bottom data. Okay, so we're missing that corner right there and we're still missing a little bit of bottom data. So I'm gonna back the scanner up because I think it's a little bit too close. And then I'm gonna adjust this and we're gonna hit it one more time. It's got a little bit of spray because why not? And we're gonna do one more scan, boom. All right, there's that corner we were missing. Now let's see if it gets to the bottom. Okay, there's more of the bottom that we were missing. And did we get the bottom? We got the bottom, look at that. That is a nice, complete part with even more scan data. So this is gonna go right into the software and be easy to align. We're gonna make sure everything's good and we'll be set. We'll have a 3D model that we can either then validate in GOM inspect or we can, uh, you know, CAD model it again perfectly just based on the scan. Like maybe this is a metal part you need to recreate uh, and there's no mold for it or anything. So you have to actually make all that from scratch. All right, I'm just gonna select, hold shift. All right, there we go. I'm gonna select the data that I don't want. I'm just gonna delete that outright and apply. Now, just to make sure everything's lining up properly, I'm gonna show you guys the alignment tool. Sometimes you'll scan a part multiple angles and then it'll show up and it'll be like the heads by the feet. It's the backwards way that it's not supposed to be, right? And it's really easy to fix. They've got a really intuitive way to align the different scans that you've done. It's right here in the software as soon as this finishes. Okay, so I've got my data. Now I'm gonna go right here and click align. And then I've got two different project groups. I'm going to go one over here and the other one over there. Now it grouped my first two scans into one. They did line up perfectly so that doesn't matter. Now I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to select three points on each of these to align by. So I'm just going to hold shift and click this corner. I know that's the same as that corner and I know this corner is the same as that corner and then I know the top of this thing is the same as the top of that thing. So that just gives it data and tell you tell it manually where to align. It's gonna align it, it was already aligned so it didn't really matter, but that's how easy it is. All right, very good, hit complete. And we've got our complete scan. So I'm just gonna go hit mesh model and I'm gonna do a watertight model versus an unwatertight. Unwatertight will leave any gaps or anything that we missed and you can fill that in later. Or watertight's gonna automatically fill it in and just give you a solid 3D printable STL, OBJ, whatever kind of file you want. So I'm gonna do low, low detail in the essence of time. And the more data you, the more scans you have, the more time it takes to mesh all those scans together because it's literally taking millions and millions and millions and millions of data points and turning it into a surface. Good times. All right, here we go. So this is our watertight, fully solid meshed model. Now you can see even all the little details, like the little lump 
of plastic on the corner here or the layer lines themselves, you can actually make that out. And this is the lowest detail. So uh, this gets pretty darn accurate. Very, very nice. So I don't know, say your boss gives you this old metal jig and he's like, hey, Jimmy, I need a new one of these, 3D model it. And you're like, well, I got this $10,000 3D scanner over here. So you can scan it and then literally have it in the time it takes to watch this video. Uh, very, very nice. Now you see in here in the holes, it just automatically filled that in. And that's the type of thing, feature, and that's the type of feature where I would probably just redo those holes perfectly in a CAD program later. Now there are ways to sort of get in there, but features like that you can just do. Now let me just export this. I'm gonna save it out. All right, now there are a lot of options in here for smoothing and sharpening and simplifying the model. You can even go into third-party software like Solid Edge or Geomagic or Fusion 360 or SolidWorks or whatever. The red bundle comes with Geomagic. It's very good, it's designed for cleaning up scans. But for today, we're just gonna save it out. I'm gonna go into Pipe Cut Jig and Pipe Cut Jig one, save as STL. Very nice. Now you'll notice this is actually measuring everything. When you're 3D scanning, you're not just, you know, photogrammetry where you're getting a 3D model of it. You're literally measuring everything down to the micron. It's crazy. All right, I'm gonna apply that. Then I'm just gonna open up Cura and I'm gonna go into here and I'm gonna find my jig scan one. No, what was it? Jig scan. Oh, HD1. I'm gonna get my pipe cut jig and I've got my STL right there. Let's drop it in cure and see what happened. And there we have it. So let's just align this to the build plate real quick. I'm gonna select this surface. Bada bing, bada boom. We've got a printable part. I can slice that, I can print that. That's awesome. Anyway, let me know if you enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you want us to scan, what you thought of this video, what you're curious about, any questions you got, and feel free to hit us up for more information on the entire line of EinScan 3D scanners. We've got a lot of stuff available and there definitely is a process in picking the right one for your application, so make sure you reach out. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Have a positive rest of your day, and I'll see you on the next one.